everyone and welcome back to week three of the Great British Bake Off. This week is bread week, so let's take a look and see what we'll be doing for this week's technical challenge. Paul would like you each to make a batch of 15 olive and cheese chia batter breadsticks. Okay, so this is something I've never baked before. I'm really excited to see what they turn out like. They sound amazing, so let's dive in and crack on with the process. So the contestants were given two hours to make the technical challenge this week. I've started off with my flour, yeast and salt in my bowl. To that we're adding water and I'm going to be using my KitchenAid to do the bulk of the mixing for me because it's just easier for the machine to do it rather than mix for a long time by hand. It is quite a wet dough as well so don't be surprised if you hear that slapping against the side of machine while it's mixing. We're adding the rest of our water and then we're going to let it mix for quite a while. So what we're looking for is a gorgeous ciabatta stick. Obviously all the same size and the same colour. Nice and brown. So now we're going to stop and check the consistency. You can see it's really stretchy and very sticky as well. We're going to go ahead, just pull the rest of that down off of our dough hook and then start to add our olive oil to it. Now it is going to mix again for a while. Make sure you do check the description of this video as well as I'm going to pop the link for the full method that they used on the show so that you can follow that through and make this at home. Now while this is mixing, I'm going to cut up my onion and also the olives as well. I did make some tweaks to the ingredients for this because we didn't want to use cheese in it and we also didn't have as many olives as they suggest you use in the recipe. Of course you could mix this up and put whatever ingredients you wanted in it. It's going to take on the flavors really nicely and just make sure whatever you're adding you cut the pieces up really small so that you don't have any chunks that are too big in your mix. Great, so that's mixed nicely. Now we're gonna add those ingredients into our mixing bowl. We're gonna give it a mix together as well to make sure that all of those are evenly distributed throughout the dough. And it smells so good already. I wish you guys could smell this. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna try this and what flavor combinations you're gonna come up with as well. And you can see there is lots of mixing with this type of bread. We're trying to get lots and lots of air into it. So we have that really nice open texture to our dough. Okay, it's fully mixed. I'm gonna scrape it off with my spatula and then we're going to dump it into our bowl. Have a look at that, doesn't that look great? Now before I put it in this bowl to rise, we're actually gonna spray it or you could just put some oil in and move it around with some kitchen paper. That's gonna make it easier to remove once it's risen. So I've popped it into my bowl, just make sure everything's nice and combined. And then we're gonna cover it with some plastic wrap. And then you wanna leave it on your counter so that it's at room temperature. It's actually gonna prove the dough. Um, it should double in size and that's gonna take about one to two hours depending on the temperature in your kitchen. Let's mark the bowl so we can see how much it rises. Judging how long to leave their dough for the first prove is critical. I just think it is not ready. Too short to prove and it won't develop the crucial open structure. So here's the fun and messy bit. Now in the recipe they say to dust your work surface with semolina. We didn't have any so I'm just using regular all-purpose flour. You can see how much our dough has risen as well. It looks amazing. It smells so good too. You want to make sure you clean all of it out of the bowl because you don't want to leave any of that goodness in there. And then as I said, your hands are going to get a little bit messy doing this, but this is all part of the fun of making breadsticks. I put a little bit of extra flour on top, and you want to be really light when you're working with this. You don't want to knock any of that air out of the dough at all. You want to make it into a loose rectangle shape, and then just start cutting pieces off that you can roll and form into the breadstick shape. So you'll see I've got a ruler on my tray. You're roughly going for about 30 centimeters here and make sure that you put them on parchment paper or a Teflon sheet so that they don't stick to your tray either. You could also just put them on a flour tray if you prefer. I like to use Teflon sheets because they're really quick and easy to wash afterwards as well and they're reusable so there's no wastage at all. Perfect, they look great. Now that I've ended up with seven here because I didn't use the full amount of ingredients, I actually halved the recipe that they suggested. And then I'm covering with plastic wrap and we're gonna let them rise again for a short period of time. Come on, second proof. Give them as long to prove as possible. How do you get them in these bags? So now that our second proofing stage is done, you wanna carefully peel back the plastic wrap. Don't worry if it looks as if it's sticking, it will come away nice and cleanly for you. 
And then we're gonna pop them in our oven, which is preheated to 420 degrees Fahrenheit, 220 degrees Celsius as per the recipe, and bake them for 15 to 20 minutes. And now I'm on make the tis whatever that thing is. Zanziki, if I we'll get this wrong, I won't be able to set foot in Cyprus again. So tzatziki is a typically Mediterranean dip that's really nice and refreshing. The base of it is some grated cucumber, which you let sit with some salt on it for a while to remove all that excess moisture from the cucumber. And next we're gonna go ahead and combine all of our ingredients into a bowl. Now I'm making a plant-based version, so I'm using an unsweetened almond yogurt for this. Obviously if you're not vegan or dairy-free, you could just use a regular Greek yogurt for it and you're having 150 grams of that. Again, the rest of the recipe is in the link in my description as well, so make sure you check that out. Now we're adding our grated cucumber. We're gonna add some garlic as well. And don't be scared to add extra if you like a really garlicky tzatziki. Next, we're adding some olive oil and some white wine vinegar. You could use lemon juice instead if you don't have white wine vinegar. And then finally, we're gonna add some herbs to it. Now you could add mint and dill. I'm just using some fresh mint from the garden. And a handy tip, if you pop your herbs into a mason jar and use a scissors, it is much, much easier to cut them up really finely this way. And then pop that into your bowl, give everything a stir, and there you go, vegan tzatziki. How long have we got there? Bakers, you have five minutes remaining in this task. You will then have to end the task. So our breadsticks are done. They're a really nice golden brown color. They smell amazing as well. And I really love that they haven't lost any size. They haven't shrunk at all in the oven, which means that we didn't overmix the dough. They have a nice firm crust to them, really nice and golden brown underneath as well. So I'm gonna let them cool for a little bit before we come back and try them. Paul and Prue are looking for 18 well-filled ciabatta breadsticks with an open structure and a crisp brown crust served with an unctuous tzatziki dip. Okay, so our ciabatta sticks are ready to try. They cool down really nicely. Let's take a look at them. We'll go for this one. And you've got that nice crunch when you break it. Let's have a look inside. It's got a really nice crumb to it. Lots of air as well, which is perfect for a ciabatta. Let's try some with the tzatziki that we made. It's really nice, so this is really, really soft. You've got that nice onion coming through and this tzatziki goes really nicely with the olives too. So I think it was a really great technical challenge this week. I didn't expect it to work out this well because I'm not that great at making bread, but it was definitely a good one to try. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. Make sure you check out the other Bake Along videos that I've made so far. And it's week four next week, so we'll see what happens then. See you soon, thanks for watching.